Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. You want a floor that's smooth <coughs> and level to help you with balance. As I talked to you before, this is vinyl tile. Looks just like a beautiful wood floor but it's a little bit more cushiony and it's easy to install. That's also a vinyl floor. Looks like a beautiful granite kitchen floor, but it's not. It's tile, it's vinyl tile. Cork is another floor that we use and helps a little bit with resiliency because if you fall or you drop something, you don't break as much. <laughs> kitchen cabinets and countertops. As I mentioned before, my husband's six foot tall. I'm five foot tall. So for him to bend over so that I can have my high cabinet versus his high cabinet makes it difficult for him. And when I try to do it on his high cabinet for comfortable for him, I can't do it. So having varied height cabinets across your kitchen helps everybody to be able to use them. Cabinets now come adjustable in many different shapes and forms. You can open a door, you can pull it down, you can press a button and the whole cabinet comes down. And lower cabinets also are fitted with a lot of fun new features so that they're more accessible to you. Different places. Cooktops. You want to have a cooktop that's a, um, that's a, uh, it's an adjustable. It's meant for you to be able to reach. It's a little bit lower. And your hand controls. You don't want to be reaching over your hot stove to reach your controls. You want to be able to have them on the side or the front. And they make them now that actually move. You can move them up and down. Press a button, and they come down to a height. Press a button, and they go back up. Sinks are the same way. You want to do the same sink uh, configuration as you've done in your bathroom, to have a little bit of knee space. And you have your plumbing all covered underneath here so that you're not going to get burned. This is one of the sinks that you can move up and down. Press this little button here. The sink goes down. Press it again. Comes back up. Wall ovens, one of my other biggest pet peeves, because I don't know about you guys, again, I'm vertically challenged. I open that oven door, and there's a 22-pound beautiful-looking turkey inside, and it's too heavy for me to get out, so I wind up dropping it on the floor sometimes, and the dogs have a field day, but um, it's very difficult for me to access the things that are in my, even if you pull out the things, sometimes they're too heavy, and they break and fall. So adjusting the height of your wall oven so that you can scoot up next to it or turn sideways to be able to get it out will help you access it better. Something new that's come on board is in Europe, although it's, it's old, but it's new again. In Europe, they've started to come out with ovens that have a side door. So it's like your microwave, it opens on the side, so you have full flush entrance and exits from your, from your oven. Rather. This is a Frigidaire. They've started to catch on. And so it's a model now coming to America. And this runs about $1,200, give or take, this installation. Same thing with your dishwasher. Be nice to have a dishwasher that you don't have to bend over to reach the fork that got stuck underneath now, wouldn't it? So standard dishwasher, raise the height. Something new is dishwasher drawers. There's actual drawers that you can have. You can put your dishes in one, your pots in the other. You can run one and not, excuse me, not the other. Refrigerators. Side-by-side -side refrigerators are a great thing because you can open the doors fully. You don't have to have that kind of space to get a full door open, and you can access it. Drawers, freezer drawers on the bottom. I don't know about you, but I can never get to that piece of frozen meat all the way stuck in the back of my freezer. It's very difficult. But having a freezer on the bottom, I certainly can reach it. Mm -hmm. They also make refrigerator drawers now. So what happens when a staircase gets between you and your destination, whether it be your bedroom, your bathroom, or your kitchen? 
Well, you have a couple options. You cannot eat, you cannot go to the bathroom, and you cannot sleep, but that's really not an option. So you could move, that is always an option, or you can get a stair lift, and they make them now in all different shapes and sizes for accommodating everybody who has a hard time going up the stairs. That's an actual stair lift. They can, if you have a round curved staircase now, you can get them, straight, whatever. They usually run a couple thousand dollars to fifteen thousand dollars, whereas as you go on up as the more complicated it becomes. And you may be able to find some distributors do sell some used models, gently used models, and you might be able to find them at a little bit cheaper price. Another option now coming into the residential market are elevators. Elevators are great, especially if you're building new, because then you can plan a shaft of stacking closets so that in the eventual down the line, when you want to remodel today for tomorrow, you have that shaft already ready for you. You've planned for it. But what if you're not able to build a new home at this point? What are some of the things you can do? Well, elevators come in a number of different types now. This is a vacuum or pneumatic elevator. This is a traction elevator, and this is your regular hydraulic lift elevator. And they run in a variety of shapes and sizes and prices. You can go to the standard model, maybe eleven or eleven or twelve thousand dollars plus the installation, plus in case you need a room, things get tacked onto it. To a Cadillac model of fifty-five, sixty thousand dollars, which actually looks like the one in you know Four Seasons. Some of the things you also have to think about is added cost of an elevator is maintenance and an annual inspection. All elevators have to have an annual inspection done by the state board. So, so what are some of the other things we can do? Whole house safety. Nowadays, you can sit on your couch and operate practically your entire house. You can open your windows, you can close your shades, you can see who's at your front door. Technology has changed a lot of things, especially in the residential market. You can turn on and off your lights, you can turn on and off your heat, you can turn on and off your air conditioner, and never leave the confines of your comfy couch. <laughs> it depends on what you want to spend and what you want to do. There's also monitors that you can get, so you can see if somebody is walking outside like your grandchild, and all of a sudden they're going to be in the middle of the street. An alert, a door alert, there's a lot of different things that you can do. Some other safeties. They now make fire suppression systems that attach underneath your hood, underneath your microwave, so if a fire starts on your stove, it'll automatically release. They also make some sensors, so if you walk away from your stove or you forget that it's on, it'll automatically shut the stove down. Some of the other things that you can do to a house. We all remember baby plugs. Those are a great thing, whether you're, again, two or 102. They now make safety covers where you have to put a plug in and turn it to be able to access it. Something to prevent getting electrocuted. They have motion detectors around your house you can buy over the counter. And you can always um, enlist in a personal emergency response system. Pendants, watches, again, they come in a variety of shapes and sizes. And now they're even coming with a GPS capability. So if you're out and about, you could be located. I know I have one for my dog who likes to run away. Some other interesting items that you can get. Medication reminder dispensers. It will remind you when you need to take your medicine. A wonderful, wonderful piece of equipment. Phones. I know with a cell phone, I never remember anybody's phone anymore. And then if I'm at a phone where I don't have my cell phone, I'm like, okay, what's the guy's name that I'm supposed to be calling? You can get a phone that you can put a picture on, so you don't have to remember a number. You just press that number and say, okay, call my daughter Susan in California. It'll automatically call her. You press the button for 911. Immediately it goes to an emergency response. See the pro see that chair? My grandfather had ALS back in the early 70s. He had one of the first prototypes of those chairs. And you know who used it mostly? Us kids. It was great to sit down and get catapulted right out of it. But nowadays they've adjusted a lot of those chairs so that you're not quite catapulted as much. I'm sure a lot of you are sitting there saying, Great things to do. How am I going to afford this? Right? Well, in my home, my golden retriever came up to me when I came home from the hospital and said, I did the math. We can afford anything you want if you get rid of that cat. But not all of us are that lucky to have a cat that costs a lot of money. 
some of the other resources for funding that you can look into. The Massachusetts Rehabilitation Council offers a home modification loan program. And up here I have a couple of flyers, but you can access it also on the web. And they offer a variety of loans. You can qualify, based on your income, for a loan of $1,000 up to $30,000, which is secured by a promissory note and a mortgage lien. It offers 0% or 3% deferred payment loans and 3% amortizing loans. A lot of legalese. Talk to Arthur. Yeah, I'm going to mention some of this. <laughs> um, but some of them, if you're eligible for a 0 one, it gets tacked onto the, to the, um, to the lien of your home, and you don't have to pay it back until that home is sold. Mm -hmm. The maximum amount of money is a one-time through $30,000, so you always want to make sure if you're going to go that path, you think of all the modifications you want to do in your home to help you pay for it. If you're a veteran, there's a lot of grants out there now that are help you try to adapt your home. There's the Adaptive Housing Grant and the Special Housing Grant. Long-term care insurance. I found out the other day that some long-term care insurances will pay for your entire bathroom remodel if you stay within the footprint of that existing bathroom. Not all do, most don't, but some are. And it's always good to look at your long-term care insurance. What are some of the things that they will cover? Aging Service Access Points, or what we call ASAPs, and there's one in Dennis for the Elder Services of Cape Cod. Sometimes they have little bits of money that they're able to grant out to people to get maybe a grab bar or two. Call and find out. They're all different. There's, um, there's a number of them across the state. But call them and find out. It's worth finding out because little bits of money add up to a nice big pool. Some specialty organizations, MS organization, ALS, Parkinson's. I know MS gives $2,000 a year for a home adaptation. And then there's other resources. We all have wonderful homes and we've built up a lot of equity in them. So there's forward and reverse mortgages, the home equity loans, personal loans, and some um, banks offer special loans just for rehabbing. Okay, final question. Who is your best resource when you're going to do something like this? Anybody know? You are. You are your best resource. Educate yourself on the project that you want to do. Number one, never sign an agreement for somebody who shows up on your door. They're not there to help you. They're there to sell the windows, the floor, the um, roof, the siding, whatever it may be. If you didn't call them, don't let them in. If you think you have a problem or you want to look at somebody to do your roof, do some investigation. Call in a couple of contractors. One of the other best ways to find out how much things are is you can go online to remodel. There's a lot number of websites, but remodeling industry does one. It's across the country. And I'll pass these around. And you can look at, this one's from Boston. They didn't have one on the key. But you can go in and type in your zip code, and you can access all different kind of information as to certain modifications that you can do. So let's say, in Boston, you want to put up a basement remodel. A mid-range basement remodel in Boston costs about $75,000. An upscale one costs a lot more. But it can give you information of the generalities of cost of things across the country. So if you have a home in Florida, and you say, well, you know what, how much is it going to cost me to maybe put on a bathroom addition? You go onto this website, you type in your zip code, and you try to find this, um, the city in and around if it doesn't have your specific city. And it can give you some basic information. I'll pass these around for you to look at. Excellent, excellent part of education. Another thing to look at when you're going to hire a contractor. Nowadays, there's some special certifications a contractor can do, and they're not easy. It's not just pay a fee of 30 bucks and you become a certified agent place specialist. Believe me, I know. I had to take classes, I had to take tests, I had to write reports. 
it's a very long and involved process, but it gives me more education to help you.